Uh, excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning for all of you. It gives me great pleasure to extend to you all a very warm welcome on behalf of His Excellency Dr. Amin Hussain Al Abiri, the Assistant Honored Secretary of Public Health Policy and Licensing Sector for the Ministry of Health and Prevention in UAE. He apologizes for not being able to attend this valuable event, the fourth edition GCC Healthscape Summit, due to an urgent official meeting. Uh, let me start by uh, the UAE vision. Uh, 2021, where it states that the UAE will invest continually to build world-class healthcare, infrastructure, expertise, and services in order to fulfill citizens' growing needs and expectations. We all have to work together to achieve this vision and goal. It is gratifying to note that the agenda of this summit covers a wide range of very interesting items relating to the healthcare sector, especially in the GCC. Uh, I wish you all a very successful event and a very pleasant stay in Dubai for the ones who came from outside. And I'm now going to give you some hints about the health scope from the global GCC and UAE perspectives. So, if we start about the global healthcare sector, as you know, it's growing tremendously. It's growing very rapidly nowadays. So, healthcare is one of the most rapidly growing sectors for the global economy, and the global expenditures are increasing. They are rising from $7,682 million uh, in 2015 to um, $9.3 trillion in 2018, with an increase of 5.2%, uh, an average increase. And this increase, as you know, will be driven by the transitional uh, it, it, the epidemiological transition we are facing nowadays. It's not just the communicable disease that we are facing, it's the non-communicable disease that are raising tremendously in our part of the world. So it's the aging population, the growing populations, the prevalence of chronic diseases, emerging market expansions, infrastructure improvements, and the technologies that are being improving uh, every year than the other. So, the most rapid growth in healthcare spending is expected to be in the Middle East and Africa. In con relative uh, to the population size, 9% uh, will be the increase until the year 2018 due to the efforts to expand access to care. And as you see, uh, this figure shows uh, what I'm saying, it demonstrates it. So, what about the global mortality data? This is Worldwide, we see that, uh, as I just uh, mentioned, the epidemiological transition, uh, communicable diseases are not uh, uh, being considered very high as before. Uh, Non-communicable diseases like cardiovascular diseases, cancers, um, injuries, and other NCDs constitute more than 75% of the total mortalities uh, for the region, and, sorry, for the whole world. So this is actually projected uh, to show a higher trend of NCDs uh, uh, until the year 2030. So it's not just about the burden of disease on communities. It also serves a big burden on the governments itself. So NCD global economic burden, it's not just a health issue, but a major economic burden. If you look at this figure here, you'd find that there's a projected increase in the expenditure on healthcare systems being $863 billion in the year 2010 and expected to be uh, $1,044 billion in... Uh, to, we look at the global trends in healthcare innovation, we'd find that mainly there are three different big items we're always talking about. It's about R&D, which is research and development, innovations, and how we are going to protect the scientists, giving them patency, giving them intellectual property rights, and how we are going to promote research and development in the GCC uh, in general. And another thing is the genetic revolution. It's genetic revolution is not just about genetic engineering or genetic diagnostics. Now we are facing something more than that, which is the 
the genetic therapy, how we can treat people using genetics. And also a third thing is the enhanced communication technologies, how we are going to use telemedicines, how we are going to use distance way of, of, of treatment to, to different uh, populations. So if we invest in such trends and in such elements, we are sure going to uh, have healthcare uh, improvement. If we look at uh, the GCC, we looked at the global very, you know, we, I gave you hints on the, on the global level, but if we look at the GCC figures and facts, we see that the populations are being um, changed in the GCC. It's not just about increase in the number of the population, but the consistency of the population itself. In this figure here, because it's very small on the computer, but if you look at uh, 2015, for instance, only 3% of the population are over 65 years. While if you look at the projected estimated figure in 2050, you'll see that 20% of the population will be over 65 years. And this is something we have to be aware and we have to have futuristic plans about it. We should not wait until this happens. We have to align with this increase. Because this increase is also um, uh, uh, having uh, certain uh, NCDs that comes with it. Uh, for instance, like uh, increase in hypertension, obesity, cancer rates, heart conditions, and we have to be ab aware about all those uh, lifestyle related diseases that we are uh, for sure going to get a higher prevalence if we didn't do anything about it. Um, for instance, here is a projected rate for diabetes. You know, diabetes is one of the problems that we face in the GCC region. In 2000, this is the, uh, what you see here is a figure uh, seeing the projection in 2030. If we don't do anything about diabetes, we, this is the percentage of change. 95% until 207%. And this, it, it's, it's, it, it can be, uh, the, the ranking can be this or other, the, the GCC uh, countries come, can come in different rankings. So if we look at uh, the GCC uh, pharmaceuticals, for instance, uh, we look at the industry outlook when we come to the field of pharmaceuticals. You see that healthcare expenditure increases, pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceuticals revenue sales will also rise. So the size of the pharmaceutical sector would be impacted by and shift in disease mix to life uh, related diseases. And if there are any pharmaceutical companies there, you will note the difference. Always the, the, the medicines for the lifestyle diseases are shifting to arise. Uh, this is primary because uh, the private sector participation rises and the local manufacturing facilities develop and thereby sales of uh, local drugs are expected to increase, which is a very good thing because we actually uh, want to improve the local markets for pharmaceuticals in the GCC. Moreover, as many patents of branded drugs are, ex uh, are expiring during uh, the, the, the years of 2015-2016, manufacturing of cheaper generic drugs is expected to increase. And based on growth of generics, manufacturing in the region shift in disease profile, pharmaceutical sales is, is expected to grow in the range of 6 to 8 uh, complex annual growth rate, compound annual growth rate, during uh, 2010 to 2020, and in the range which is in the range of $11.6 billion. It's $9.3 million. And 3.65% of this is included for the GDP. Out of this, of, out of this GDP, 12.9% is for pharmaceutical sector. 9.7 doctors are there for 10,000 inhabitants. That's the rate uh, in 2015. And 1.1 bed per 1,000 inhabitants in UAE. If we look at the health profile data for the UAE, it will not be different from the global uh, data because as you see, because of the transitional uh, epidemic, see that the non-communicable diseases are also the prevalent ones, not the communicable diseases. And uh, they cause about 65.2% of all deaths. 
All essential medicines required for treatment of non-communicable diseases are available in the public health sector, which is a fortunate thing. If we look at the healthcare investment forecast, uh, economically wise, we will find that UAE's health expenditure reached a value of 56.26 billion in 2015, and then 59.2 billion in 2016. This is expected to rise by 6% in 2025, which is a very high figure considering only the short time. The government share of total health expenditure is expected uh, to fall uh, for, uh, from, from 71 to 61. Why? Because of the PPP, the public-private partnership. This aligns with our strategy to have our private sector uh, uh, one of our stakeholders. When we look at the healthcare providers in UAE, we'll find that there is a tremendous increase. If we, for instance, take an example for physicians. If you look at the physicians in 2010, it, they were 12,632, and in 2015, uh, this figure was raised to 26,711. 1.52 per 1,000 population in 2010, which has almost doubled in 2015 with a number of 2.91 per 1,000 population. However, there is still a need for more physicians, nurses and pharmacists. Even with the current increase, it's not keeping pace with the shifts in health improvement. So we still need to hire more physicians, qualified ones, not just hire physicians as to align with the strategy for the UAE. What about the pharmaceutical market? It actually takes the same pace like the healthcare system. I will not go through all the figures, but by 2025, there will be an increase of 0.79% of the GDP related to pharmaceuticals, and also even the, 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 the number itself will increase. What about pharmaceutical trade forecast? Pharmaceutical imports um, stood to uh, 8.78 billion uh, in 2015, while the exports stood to 3.37 billion in the same year. Import will increase with a CAGR of 6.4% in the year 2020. And the same things for the export. It will increase by 2.1%. UAE imports pharmaceutical products. You know that 80% of pharmaceutical products in UAE are imported. But actually, we are working on increasing and improving the local industry in the UAE. Uh, but however, uh, in 80 percent of the pharmaceuticals are being imported from different countries all over the world, uh, like Switzerland, UK, Germany, Belgium, and comprising high-value patented uh, products. And we also have something called the fast-track system here in UAE, where uh, uh, registration of very essential drugs are being done. Uh, if we look at the progress of the pharmaceutical industry, as I was just mentioning about the local industry in UAE, a uh, number of the pharmaceutical factories are being increased, um, uh, and an estimated of 34 factories will be... Actually, there are many factors, some of which is that UAE has one of the most liberal trade regimens in the Gulf and attracts strong capital flows from across the region. It is a prog progressively diversifying its economy. It's not just for oil, not just for healthcare, not just for medical tourism, not just for industry. It is diverse, there is diversification of all uh, the, the economy systems. And it is one of the more developed markets in the Middle East with strong healthcare infrastructure, a strong patented drug market largely as a result of the country's preference for the latest medicines and the high technology uh, procedures. And the local manufacturing industry is actively being improved. Um, at the end also, the increase of the population numbers, including expatriates that are being here, <coughs> leading to significantly higher healthcare expenditure and flourishing trade market. So, as I mentioned in my speech, the UAE 2021 vision states that we want to have a world-class healthcare. 
By doing so, we fulfill the citizens' growing needs and expectations. And it's one part of the whole UAE vision. According to the Ministry of Health and Prevention Strategy Roadmap of 24, 20, uh, 2014 to 2016, and Alhamdulillah, we have managed to fulfill all our uh, uh, strategic objectives for this year. Uh, I will just tell you that our vision is to the sustained health for a community enjoying comprehensive health care and long life. And we actually um, distribute this on different uh, pillars of care, one of which uh, is the health system with international standards. Through, for instance, regulatory continuum, uh, like legislations and policies development. Uh, by the year 2016, as you see, we have eight legislations that have been released, one of which is the Medical Liability Federal Law by Decree Number 4 for the year 2016, and this actually will make a, uh, a rise and, uh, of the improvement of the healthcare system in the country. It protects the patient's rights, it, it even protects the, the, the healthcare provider rights, give them uh, a legislative uh, way of new, knowing their duties and their rights at the same time. It regulates all the private medical facilities in the country. We have the organ transplant regulation, federal law, communicable disease control, federal law, and the national strategic stock, stockpile decree, uh, and its cabinet executive decree. These are just examples of some of the laws and legislations that have been developed and released. Excuse me, there's something in the noise of activities related to the quality and safety of drugs in the UAE, starting from establishing a registration system and procedures to, dra to trade medicines and uh, register pharmaceuticals. We have monitor compliance with the legislations and regulations. We conduct surveillance uh, on drugs and pharmaceutical supplies uh, uh, under the pharmacovigilance system. Uh, we protect the intellectual property, conduct required analysis, and control drug price, profit margin for the pharmacies and the distributors. And as I mentioned before, we always try to bridge the gap between the private and the public sectors. I end my uh, presentation with uh, a very nice slide uh, His Excellency Dr. Amin always likes to end the presentations with, which is uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid um, saying that we want to be among the, the best countries in the world by 2021 and this with our citizens at the heart of the development, we strive to become one of the most competitive countries in the world. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you a very successful event. Thank you very much.